I said again, your mind is connected to your mouth. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever been thinking something? Get to somebody, and you thinking of it real good, and you thought about it so good till you just open your mouth and start talking. I got five witnesses. You, 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 you have been arguing with somebody in your mind? No. Y'all ain't gonna help me this preacher. You have been arguing with somebody in your mind? I mean, you just arguing in your mind, hit with somebody. And then you end up verbalizing, good. I mean, he showed me right here. Good. And everybody look at you like, what are you, you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm just, uh, don't, don't trip off me, don't mind me. We need to be my choppers. <laughs> because why? Your thinking is powerful. Because what you think, so as a man thinketh, the word says, so is he. Because your thoughts materialize into your mind. There was somebody. That's why we talk about when you say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Pick with somebody. When you think, that word think, pick with somebody, T-H-I-N-K, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul does what? Makes my mouth open up, cries out, because when you start thinking, it automatically should make you start thinking. Yeah. Let me preach something. When you start thinking of something, it's going to materialize into words which come out of your mouth. In other words, our season starts with thinking. And it moves from thinking, and then it moves to the very core. I hope I'm helping somebody. It moves to the very core of our mind, yeah. and it, it, it then, once it gets into the core of our mind, then it becomes a part of us. Right. Help somebody. You ever thought about something so long? Help me somebody, do you live it? You breathe it? Yes. You think on it so long? Have you, ever, have you ever had something in your mind so all of us have it, something in our mind so that you can be half asleep but you still can do it? Go ahead with somebody. You you you, you know you, you hey have you been you 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 driving? Get this somebody. You driving so long. You know how to drive. Where you going? And then when you get there, you say, I don't remember how I get home. Go ahead with somebody. Because why? It's in you so long. Go ahead with somebody. You can do it without with very little effort. Yeah. But thinking is the part where God wants to affect our thinking so our season can change. Let me preach something. Yeah, yeah. And once we think it long enough, then we speak it out of our mouth. That's where we have to be really cautious at. When we allow it to come up out of our mouth. Put your name and say, baby, you got to be careful. Well, go in your head and out your mouth. I'm going to say it again, baby, you got to be careful. Well, come in your head and out of your mouth. You know, a lot of people, you know, I, I, when I think about that, I often, I often uh, reflect back to when we talk about that when it comes to forgiving a person. What we have to keep in mind is when we say, well, you know what, I said something to someone, and once I said it, I owe, I owe God an apology. And I often teach that what, ha what has to happen is if you think it, but don't say it, hit right. with somebody, you owe God an apology. Somebody. If you think something about a person, but don't say it, the person didn't hear it. Right. Pick somebody. You owe God an apology. Yeah. Are you with me? Because God knows our thoughts. Yeah. Are you with me? But once we speak it out of our mouth, pick somebody, we owe God an apology. And also the person, because the words have what? Came out and went out to accomplish. Are you hearing? And so we must keep in mind that thinking goes to our mouth and produces words, and words will change seasons. Oh, let me preach somebody. I said again, words will change seasons. You have to tell yourself, I feel better. 
somebody can say, you just psyching yourself out. Call it what you want to. Maybe somebody. But I'm speaking. I, I feel better. Are you with me? Call it as you may. But I will not be broke. I will have excess. Come on, help me somebody. Come on, I know I'm sick now, but I am healed. Hit me somebody. Tell yourself one day, this will be the last time I feel this prescription. Let me put somebody. You have to talk and say, one day, this will be the last time I take this pill. Come on, talk to me somebody. You have to tell and speak it out of your mouth and put it to the atmosphere because that's when, that's why the word of God tells us that when we pray, we are to open our mouth. Because why? Words change seasons. Ooh, yeah. say words. words. Change seasons. So we have to understand, because we're speaking out of our mouth, words go out and accomplish. That's why I don't know who wrote that song. I don't know who taught us that. Those of us who are 40, at least 40 and above, we've always talked sticks and stones. Y'all seen that up here when y'all looking? We saw something in Memphis. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That ain't true. I'm sorry, that ain't true. Come on, hit me somebody. I can't remember what age I found it out, but that ain't true. I think I found that right when mama said, this is going to hurt me more than it hurt you. Y'all remember that? When she got, we got to get that whooping. Now this, this don't hurt me. Boy, then I, don't, I, don't, I didn't understand that would mean to somebody. <laughs> I know them two things that I found not to be true. If it's somebody, a whooping hurt me more than it hurt it. her. Come on, help me somebody. But then, words that come out of people's mouth, they do hurt. And they hurt different from sticks and stones. Come yeah. hit with somebody. Because sticks and stones hit with somebody will hit you, hit with somebody, and maybe scratch you, but words will also leave scars. Yeah. Oh, hit with somebody. Words will cut further than sticks leave. Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Words will cut harder than stones We right. hit with somebody. Words will hurt. And words changes seasons. Let me preach somebody. And so we got to be cautious when we speak it out of our mouth. That's why when we pray, Luke 11, 1, the Bible said, and John uh, was teaching his disciples to pray. His disciples, John had disciples as well. And Jesus' disciples came and said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And Jesus said, fine, when you pray, say, let me say say. That word say means speak. Hit me somebody. Say our Father. Hit me preach somebody. Not our God, but our Father. I'm your child. That automatically starts the problem of saying, you are superior and I'm inferior. Yeah, right. When you say, our Father, make me shout out. Yeah, when you say, our Father, yeah, right. when you say, our Father, that's automatically setting a precedence yeah. that no matter who you are on earth, you may be a doctor, you may be a lawyer, you may make a hundred grand, you may have three cars and two houses, but you're saying, I'm talking to somebody that has more than me. Yeah. And I am talking as an inferior, talking to a superior. Yeah. So you say, our father. Yeah. In other words, the one who birthed me, the one who supplied my needs. Our father, which are where? In yeah. heaven. Help me preach something. Heaven, that place that no man has returned from heaven. Hit me preach somebody. That third atmosphere of that arena. Hit me somebody high above the space. Heaven. Where prayers are. Answer with me. Hit me somebody. Heaven. 
where the saints of God go and receive eternal yeah. rest. Heaven, Heaven, where there's a tree of life. And let me go old school. And they yeah. tell me that the leaves are good for the healing yeah. of the nation. Heaven. Y'all ain't got me to preach something yeah. Streets are said to be paved with gold, even though we know they're not. That is how immaculate heaven is. Are you with me? Yeah. Heaven where God sits high and looks low. low. Are you with me? Yeah. Heaven, yeah. how God, our Father, which art in heaven, holy yeah. is your name. Okay. Oh, let me preach something. Your name is holy. Holy means set aside. Holy means separated. Holy means set aside for a specific use, for a specific purpose. Sanctified. Give to somebody. Set aside. Baptized. Thank you, Jesus. Holy is your name. In other words, it ain't no other name like your name. In other words, when I say our Father, if I was praying that prayer in front of my daddy, he would automatically know I'm not talking about him. Let me preach somebody. If I was praying, if you was praying, our father and your daddy was right there, your daddy wouldn't say, huh? He would automatically know you weren't talking about him because you said, holy is your name. In other words, I am, my name is separate from any other name. In other words, when you say my name, there is no response that's coming back. What do you mean, preacher? I'm simply saying, if I say Michael Jordan, somebody young gonna holler back LeBron James. Help me somebody. If I say Sonny Liston, somebody gonna holler back Mike Tyson. Help me somebody. If I say Hank Aaron, somebody gonna holler back Der Derek Jeter. Help me preach somebody. Huh? Oh, hell, they'll help me preach somebody. If I say Kevin, if I say Mike Vick, somebody gonna holler back Randy Jackson. Come on, talk to me, somebody, Lamar Jackson. Maybe somebody, if I, if I, if I say Dallas Cowboys, somebody gonna holler back at the New England Patriots. Don't go make me go there, I'm coming out of my sermon, hit me somebody. Y'all know we won last night, right? man. <laughs> but when you say the name of Jesus, there's a hush that comes over the world. When you say the name of Jesus, nobody can answer back with an alternative name. Because there is no other name that to somebody given under the heavens whereby men can be saved except by the name of Jesus. I said, Jesus, my older brother. <laughs> I said, Jesus, my leading pole. I said, Jesus. Help me somebody, a four-day traveler, my Jesus. Help me somebody, a walking cane, Jesus. Water for thirsty people, Jesus. Help me somebody, food on table, Jesus. A bum, help me somebody, a salve in Gilead. Help me somebody, Jesus. Soon, a sensei. So, do you know him? Our Father, which art in heaven. I'm talking about making words out of your mouth. Speaking seasons. Our Father, which art in heaven, how to be thy name. Give me somebody. Holy is your name. Thy will be done. Give me somebody. That's a prayer that he's requesting. Not that it happens, but it's what he desires for it to happen. And I even step out to say that. Majority of the time, God's will is not being done. But it's more so our will being done. And that's why we pray, Lord, your will be done. On earth, as it is being done. Help me somebody. In heaven. Heaven is where God's will is being done. Let me hear that. Let me hear that. Let me hear that. So, our seasons change when we speak differently out of our mouth. So ask yourself, what are you trying to change? Ask yourself, what are you looking for God to do? I'm not going to say in 2020. 
What, what, what are you looking God, for God to change in your life? Yeah. Can I tell you something? You don't have to wait to 2020. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. Change begins now when you speak. You know, I, I was, I was, I was going, I was going to preach a little different and talk about that 2020. Because when we think 2020, we think about vision. We think about 2020 means seeing correctly. That be somebody. We think about 2020 means we can see clearly. So we all want God to help us to see clearly. Are you with me? We, we, all, we all want to see better, but not only do we need to see better, once we see better, we have to do better. Come ahead and preach something. Because it's one thing to see it, but it's another thing to, to do it. Come ahead and preach something. And so, but if we talk about seeing better, then it also means we have to have a correction. Give me somebody. Because in order to see, we got to be able to, all of us can't see clearly, so sometimes we have to have what's called correction. Right. Pastor, what do you mean? I'm talking about what's on your face. Help me somebody. You got glasses, and they're called corrective lenses. Help me preach something. In order, for, to order, in order for us to be able to see, watch this. I'm going to bless you. I hope you get it. In order for us to be able to see 2020 or see corrected, help me somebody. We have to have what's called corrective lenses. I see most of y'all like your pastor, heaven somebody, got corrected lenses. In other words, your vision ain't what it used to be. Come ahead with somebody. But either it could have been hereditary that you can't see, like me, heaven somebody. If you had a maternal family, heaven somebody. 99.9% of the chance it is you need to get a vision plan. Heaven somebody, because you're going to wear glasses, heaven somebody, if you're in our family. Come on, help me somebody. And so, vision must be corrected. Yeah. Y'all missed it. Oh, wow. Say it again. Vision must be corrected. But in order for vision to be corrected, you have to first go present yourself to be tested. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I preached the wrong circuit, the wrong place. Help me somebody. You got to present yourself to go get tested. Because watch this. You cannot correct what has not been tested. All right, all right, all right. Give me somebody. And if that been there, understand this. What you do not confess, give me somebody. God cannot have access to change. In other words, when, when, I, when, I, when I see that I, my glasses get blurred, I, I would go a little small denial process when I went and had my glasses updated. Help me somebody. And I noticed that I sometimes can see that this thing has happened all of a sudden. Y'all didn't tell me about this. It's happened all of a sudden. That sometimes I can see better with my glasses off. Help me somebody. Than with my glasses on. And so what took place was I was looking at stuff and my wife got on me about looking through my glasses like an old man like this right here. <laughs> she said, well, baby, don't look like that. I said, what? I said, I'm trying to see. They know you, but you look like an old man. <laughs> there was somebody. So I went and got my eyes tested. There was somebody. And I took my glasses back to the doctor three times. Because I was in denial that I needed what's called back focus. Y'all let me preach. Because I couldn't see like I used to could see. Let me preach somebody. And I needed what I was already seeing that was being corrected to be corrected some more. Understand in life, there's always going to be some correction going on. Are you ready? Always gonna be correction going on through life, and that would change in correction. And so I took them back, and they had they presented me with an option of having bifocals, help me somebody, and I can have an option of two kinds of bifocals. Help me somebody. One called no line. Are you with me? <laughs> Say amen, church. Help me somebody. And others called you got line bifocals. 
They explained to me what it was. Said to somebody, somebody who made the tail, and somebody who won't make the tail. So quite naturally, you know what I tried first. Said to somebody, I tried the ones I ain't gonna want nobody to see. I'm up here preaching. Said to somebody, and all of these pages just. I'm trying to hold the words together. I'm telling, I'm telling Matthew, stop going over in Mark. Telling John, hit with somebody, stop talking and looking and just moving. Hit with somebody. And I had to realize that I needed correction in my vision. Are you with me? And hesitant as I was, I'm almost finished, I'm doing something. Hesitant as I was, what I didn't want was really what I needed. Hit with somebody. Well, just a little time to get used to what I've been wrong or what I need. But once I got what I needed, it helped me and I'm fine. All right. All right. What says in life, change is not what we want, yes. but it's what we need. Yes. And when we get change in what we need, it helps us to see where God is really trying to take us. Yes. All right. yes. Are you with me? And so I'm finished. Just a thought. So I told you to give just a thought. How change will bring your season to them. How change will bring about a change in your thinking. Thinking changes seasons. Your words changes seasons. Your vision, your outlook changes seasons. Don't sit and wait on somebody. Mm. Baby, somebody. To come along and change your seats. Amen. Baby, somebody. Start changing your mind. Yeah. Start changing your talk. Yeah. Start changing what comes out of your mouth. Be careful on the little things that you speak out of your mouth. Yeah. Baby, somebody. I even have to be careful when I say stuff like, Woo, my feet are killing me. <laughs> come here, somebody. Oh, Lord, help me somebody. My head is killing me. Help me, help me be careful. Now, I hate to be careful now. I tell people, I don't love you to death. I love you to life. Come on, help me somebody. We got to be mindful of what comes out of our mouth because of your season. Are you with me? It's right in your mouth. Touch your name and say, neighbor. Yeah. Your season. Is right in your mouth. Come look at me and say, your season is right in your mouth. Clap your hands and give the Lord a hand. Oh, come on, we do better than that. So what, what, what are you going to change? What are you going to work on as far as your thinking? Don't you know that you can feel better when you think better? Come on, help me somebody. Don't you, know, don't, don't you know that when you start thinking better, yeah. it affects your physical body? Yes. Huh? Yeah, I know, I know y'all may not be able to be truthful, yeah. Yeah. but there are some times when I was working a secular job and I didn't want to go to work, I lied and said I was sick. I know y'all ain't done that. Just the past, the past ain't done that. Y'all ain't done that. I lied and said I was sick and wasn't feeling good. And you, you know, an old folk tell you, you tell one lie, you gotta tell another to come up that lie. And before you know it, get to somebody, you way on down the road, on the road, on the live boulevard. Get to somebody. And mama said, you tell a lie when the truth will do. Y'all with me? You ever told a lie that you wasn't feeling good, or blah, blah, blah? And you rehearsed it so good, so long, till you had to start. I don't know what you're talking about. And you, you had to start feeling the pain. Yeah. It's almost like play shouting at the house. We're out of time, but we're certainly not out of message. This morning to our live stream, we pray that something was said that will help bless your day. Join us each and every Sunday here, live at St. James. Our morning worship starts at 9 a.m. I'm normally up preaching by 9.45, and we're finished by 11.15.
Of course, you can stay for our Sunday Bible class, which is after service. It starts 15 minutes after the benediction. Or you can join us for our Wednesdays. We call it Work the Word on Wednesdays. 11.30 a.m. Wednesday morning or 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday evening. If you will, visit our website to see what we got going on, upcoming events, stjamesbfc.com, or yes, you can even follow us on Facebook. Hope to see you soon. Have a blessed and great day. But it's my time. It's just my time. Don't you know that ain't true? Who is quiet in here? <laughs> Don't you know that ain't true? It, 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 it was your time a long time ago. But something took place. There was somebody where you should have been dead. Yeah. Yeah. But you're still yeah. here. Yeah. Come on, to somebody. But I guess when God get ready for me, here come God. That is somebody that don't need you in heaven. We need you more here on earth. Oh, y'all so quiet. But guess what? It's so true. Yes. God don't need you in heaven. What do you need you for? That is somebody. That is where it's your reward. He needs you here on earth. Pastor, how are you gonna say that? Read your Bible. Look at those who talk, talk about that man who had five brothers that died and went to hell and said, you know what? I wish I was there on earth because if I was, I could tell my brothers this. And I could tell my brothers this. Let me tell you something. Live. Live. And not only live, but live the best you can live. I'm not talking to somebody here. It ain't over. And guess what? When God gets ready for you, He know where you at. Right. He ain't gonna ask you. Right. Come on, help me somebody. Uh -huh. He knows. But until then, change your way of thinking. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. You understand what I'm saying? And speak it into the atmosphere. That change will take place. And the change first starts in your mind. It starts with you. Look at somebody say, change, change. Starts, starts with you. With you. Mm -hmm. you say, I look at you. It starts with you. Amen? Amen. I hope I said something to help encourage you. Amen. I hope I said something. Amen. That will challenge you in your thinking. Amen, church. Amen. What I desire, what I desire to see from our people.